Welcome back, everybody! Today we're playing the demo of Plane Accident over on Steam. In this, we can become an inspector examining causes of plane crashes, visit the crash site, gather evidence, and interrogate witnesses. Explain whether the accident was caused by independent factors or human errors. Interesting. As a real pilot and a former air traffic controller myself, I'm interested to see how they do this. Like, you can't fudge the aerospace stuff in a game about plane crashes. So, we'll see what we have here. All right, new game. Goldberg case. A plane has crashed on the reservation near Carlton. A Beechcraft Sundowner C-23 light aircraft has crashed. The weather conditions were ideal. The pilot, Alfred Goldberg, did not survive. The body has been secured by appropriate services. Discover the cause of the crash. Interesting, a Beechcraft Sundowner. I am not familiar. So we just get to the crash scene and we've got Anthony here ready to help us. Hey kid, my name's Anthony and I know everything about plane crashes. <laughs> I'll help you during the first day of your work. In the beginning, you have to collect the equipment. Take the backpack from the car's trunk. Uh, excuse me, sir, this very clearly is not a car. It is labeled as a pickup right there. This is not a car where I'm from. This would be a pickup or a truck. I mean, it's even called truck and it's got blinged out exhaust. I mean, come on here. Okay, find the wreckage. Are there witnesses around here who can direct me to the plane? Excuse me, excuse me. Was it you that reported a plane crash? Hello? I am seemingly not allowed to go that way. What are you trying to hide over there, huh? Huh, did you guys shoot him down? Oh, I've got something in the back of the truck here. Yeah, the drone. This is the control panel. First, you have to check the surrounding. Scan for map. Whoa. I'm not totally confident that drone would have cleared the tire. Whoa. Scan for parts. And now choose the zones that interest me. Can I just do them all? Well, all right. You know, I feel like as a as an operator of a drone for commercial purposes, I would not have parked under these power lines, <laughs> you know? Or at least I would pick up the box, move it clear of the, uh, you know, clear of the obstruction and then launch it. You know, this, this is just dangerous right here. The drone has marked circles around the objects that may be parts of aircraft or evidence in the case, but they can be regular garbage as well. Ugh, bunch of litterers out here. Oh, oh wow, okay, we got, we got some stuff here. All right, we're approaching the first amount of debris here. Oh, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it, they threw out the bathtub mid-flight and uh, yeah. Yeah, that would definitely, that would do you in. How did that hut ping as garbage, but this one didn't? Oh, this one's got beer, I see. This one's got beer, I get it. Let's get down here, what looks like a river. Oh, I see it, crash located. The wreckage has been found, mark the crash site. They did talk about the body already being secured. We've already had some humans around here spoiling evidence, undoubtedly. Supposed to put down flags, okay, now we put down the flags. Whoa. Oh, fire. Sparks from the electrical system have started a fire. Put it out quickly before the wreckage explodes. To do this, use the extinguisher. You trying to tell me that EMS on site at the beginning? Oh, wow. The, the, the GPS is still on. They didn't even take the time to turn off the batteries? That's just dangerous. Oh, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, we got a flask. We got some sort of flask here. Oh my gosh. I'm a I'm a 12 hour bottle to throttle sort of guy, personally. But I mean, you can do less, but that's not, that's not a, that's not a good way to go. Mark all elements of the wreckage. So it looks like, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a debris field back there. Okay. All right. Um, door. Oh, we're putting down posts. I have not been on the uh, business end of one of these investigations, so I don't I don't know anything about posting. Yoke just came off, huh? That's interesting. So I mean, the like the the seat being out, that could have been first responders, you know, just clearing, breaking off a yoke would be very understandable in that setting too. Yeah, and so we got four seats. It's a nice little plane, frankly. Got the other seat. We got the booze. Where's the propeller? Whoa. Oh, interesting. You know, if you think about this from a physics standpoint, a propeller that was attached to there, ending up right there, that begs that begs some questions. I mean, if it was, if the propeller was still spinning, it would have torn up all this, and it would be bent, it would be bent to oblivion right here. 
Hmm. All right. Well, I'm inclined to think that the propeller was not spinning, but was perhaps loose, and that this stop right here was tremendously forceful. Got a wing. You know, I'm not familiar enough with this aircraft. Is this a retractable gear? Let's see. Yeah, not enough. Not enough information in there. But based on the simplicity of the controls, I'm guessing not. That's a wing. It's white, so this is probably a flap. Yeah, that's the flap that would be right there. Where's the aileron? Luggage door, maybe? Whatever this hillbilly town is, it's real classy. I mean, this this is a nicer, nicer washing machine than some people I know have in real life. That's just their, their rocky field washing machine. Positively picturesque up in here, you know? Who knows what sort of great stuff this community was up to before this day was so surreptitiously interrupted by uh, an airplane falling from the sky. Oh, that is the aileron. Interesting. So this, this is the aileron. This is a little flap out at the end of the wing that helps the plane roll. It doesn't look like it came off in the crash. So who knows? I mean, for the aileron to be right here and the plane to have crashed over there with like a debris field that's, I can't even go further this way, with a debris field that's back here, that aileron would have had, uh, boy, I don't know. If, if the aileron detaching was a cause of the crash and the plane is just right there, then the plane was, was wildly low to begin with. I think this, this right here, I think this is a red herring. I don't think this had anything to do with the crash. Time to take some nice portraiture of all the evidence. Yes, propellers always love the camera. Propellers love the camera. Yes, that's good. Good, all right. It looks like there's nothing more for us here. Use the telephone to order transportation of the wreckage to the hangar. It's time to figure out the cause of the crash. I bet you'd like that, Anthony. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna figure it out right here. You know what? You know what? We had a drunk pilot uh, who's German and so uh, removed an aileron because it was more efficient that way. He didn't need the extra weight and uh, realized when he, when he took a swig that it wasn't German lager. Someone had swapped it out with, uh, with Coors Light. He, you know what he was trying to do? He was trying to go order a beer from that hut over there. He saw the beer sign. Wait a second. Yeah. He saw the beer sign on a low flyby after realizing that he had only Coors Light, tried to land it in this field over here, being the responsible person. I mean, he did a great job avoiding the trees, you know, kudos to him. And unfortunately didn't realize all the life altering boulders that just happened to litter this particular field. I get it, I'm right there with him. All right, mission accomplished, going to the hangar. In the hangar, the real investigation begins. Go to the office part and read the case files laying on the table. Okay, we have a tricked out Cessna. Holy goodness. Can you imagine how loud that thing would be? That is, I'm digging it. The good news here is that not only is our investigator something of a coffee addict, but he also has excellent taste. Oh my gosh. In the flight log, the pilot describes the flight. Thanks to this, we can find out whether the plane had malfunctions. Look at the entries in search of clues. I don't even recall what date the accident was. Okay, August flights are pretty normal. Flew from New York to Savannah? I don't even know. I don't even know. Two hours? I'm questioning that. Savannah back to New York though. The weather was partially clouded. What is that? Like scattered? Is that like a is that like a scattered layer? I don't know. I, I need I need appropriate descriptors. Are we talking a ceiling? Was this a broken layer? I don't know. Engine slightly stuttered, and this was on the 18th of August. Let the mechanic Paul inspect the matter. Paul's number. Oh, gee, that is a lot of extra numbers. I don't even know how to handle that. In the service book, you'll find information about servicing and the contact data of the mechanics taking care of the aircraft. Look through the book, you might find something interesting. Hmm, all right. 2019, fixing the altimeter, conservation of the yoke, replacement of all position and signal lights. I feel like around then they would have been needing to install uh, ADS-B out. And that was a big deal, that was expensive. This aircraft must have already been equipped with it. Check the testimonies of the witnesses. Dr. Quinsby. The cause of the pilot's death were numerous internal injuries caused by the aircraft crashing into the ground. 
Generally, we would call that blunt force trauma. The assistant. My God, what a tragedy. He had found out that Margaret, his wife, had gone to their house in the mountains. Not alone, but with a lover. The mechanic named Paul was responsible for the aircraft. Maybe he will know something more about it. Another person worth asking is Mrs. Goldberg. I don't believe this to be an ordinary accident. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't make this like a murder thing. And by the way, the person who's responsible for the aircraft is always the pilot in command. Like, sorry, but you don't get to blame the mechanic here. Use the telephone to talk to people who can help solve the crash. Is there a time system in this? Because it is 1246 AM, okay? I don't think anybody's gonna be answering my calls right now. You know what, mechanic? Mechanic Paul. <laughs> he answered. <laughs> And, and, to be clear, absolutely looks like a murderer. I've been working with aircrafts for almost 20 years, seven to eight of which have been with the Goldbergs. When I do things, it's always top notch. I never allow myself any screw ups. You can check it by making a scan. Oh man, I was coming out to throw some gray into them chickens and here I see this big old plane going right down. Black smoke coming out of its tail. Must have been some engine malfunction. I mean, I know back in Vietnam, I served in the Air Force. Oh, did you, Bill? Did you? Yeah, all right. I was driving with my kids and I saw a fallen plane. It was flying in a slanted way as if it had trouble staying in the air. Oh, interesting. Steering. Send the aileron for a further inspection. Oh my gosh, look at that. Case topics. Engine failure, alcohol, murder. <laughs> If this ends up being about murder, I am going to be very disappointed. One of the investigations, key element is putting the wreckage of the plane together. We got a hatch. Yep. Cargo door, absolutely. We got, can I, can I install the whiskey bottler? Was there, is there a cubby for the whiskey bottler? Hmm? No? All right. Uh, I'll take the yoke. Let's see, we gotta get seats on the inside here. There we go. This is kind of cool. It's kind of fun, I like this. I just want to point out what a tremendous tripping hazard this whole arrangement is, okay? This is definitely not, not an OSHA safe workplace right here. One person just manhandling this wildly bent wing right here. That would be a team lift. All right, the flap. Now this is the thing that you deploy and it goes down like that and it helps you slow down, helps kind of control the aircraft a little bit better at really slow speeds, generally when you're getting ready for landing or possibly some takeoff situations. Okay, the scan of the aircraft looks good, so it wasn't anything obvious to do with the body. We've got the whiskey bottler sent off for analysis, and now we need to send off the aileron and the engine. Time to take things back apart. Where can I put this? Oh, hey, perfect. Get the top of the cowling off here. Just real quick, pop the engine out by hand. No big deal. <laughs> I wish there was a plate. Can I put it down? Yeah, let's have a look at this thing. I'm not familiar with this engine. Ah, good. Horizontally opposed. You know, most car engines are a V. Most plane, not most, many plane engines are horizontally opposed, though. It helps reduce the vibration. Looks pretty darn clean for an aircraft motor, to be honest with you. All right, send this thing off for an inspection. Am I, am I like an independent contractor here? By the way, by the, am I, am I a government employee doing this investigation? I mean, I would think so, right? I mean, my telephone number was definitely not in the United States, but all of these flights were, and that, and that aircraft is registered in Germany. So I, <laughs> what, what kind of aircraft registration is that? Okay. Call the witnesses. I stand corrected. We have very, very strict OSHA requirements around here. So I can't even take the drill in there with me. No problem. Mrs. Goldberg, this is the wife. Oh well, a violent life and a violent death. He was always a ticking bomb. I never knew when he would explode and start another fight. I had wanted to break up with him for a long time, but my husband didn't want to give me a divorce. How did we meet? Ironically, we met many years ago. We met in an aero club. Wife is a pilot too, all right. Things had been sour between the Goldbergs for a long time. She wanted a divorce and he would say it would only be over his dead body. It was all about their common property, a million dollars. For some time, Mrs. Goldberg would take the plane and look for some peace and quiet in the mountains. It's very suspicious that this time she did not take the plane. <laughs> Board's getting more and more wild, I like it. Okay, we got the whiskey. 
You received an email. Now you have to approach your desk and turn on the computer. You can receive emails in your inbox. Slow down, Copernicus. We're gonna take a quick swig and then check the stuff. Having conducted the analysis, we confirm that there's a 15-year-old scotch whiskey inside. Cheers, the chem lab team. Was there whiskey in the hip flask? I recommend a blood test to check whether Goldberg was piloting under the influence of alcohol. Yeah, I mean, can you do this for me, man? This is ridiculous. I love it when the doctor's like, you just, you just gotta order that test. Like, dude. The health system in the United States makes no sense to anybody, okay? I need you to help me navigate the- whoa. I, uh, I just, I just got the engine. No big deal. Aviation Mechanics Institute. Having conducted a series of tests, we found no technical malfunctions. During the crash, the engine was operational. Thank you. Okay, engine was functional. We've checked the aileron, and the preliminary analysis showed that the aileron could have fallen off before hitting the ground. I called it. I called it. We suspect it to be fault of the applied mounting screws. We recommend a further examination of the screws. Bolts for additional analysis. Okay. You doing some crash analysis on the right flyer? in here this is ridiculous order goldberg's blood test how exactly do you want me to do that <laughs> like what do i need to do i have to send an email order order goldberg's blood test you have to consciously go to the outbox i wanted to leave him for a long time but he wouldn't grant me a divorce would have been too shameful for him why didn't i take the plane to the mountains that day i took the car and visited my lawyer on the way in order to file the divorce anyway you can check it do you suggest it was me who caused the accident that's ludicrous <laughs> Good word, good word. The blood test of the deceased man indicated an alcohol level of about 0.2 to 0.3. Such amount did not help with the piloting, but certainly did not have a significant effect on the crash. With kind regards, my goodness, hey. I'll tell you what, you, uh, the effects of alcohol are amplified at altitude. There's less oxygen, it, it hits harder. Um, yeah, yeah, hey, pretty much most pilots have been a passenger in a small plane uh, when they've had a couple drinks so they can understand how bad it is. You do not ever want to fly with any alcohol in your system. And even just riding can be uh, pretty darn terrible uh, if you've had a drink or two. Whoa, all right, Miss Goldberg. Uh, don't know. This is me asking her about her alibi, and this was her response. <laughs> yes, Miss Miss Goldberg, can we talk about your plot to murder your husband a little bit more? <laughs> and she responds with this. <laughs> okay, all right, cool, cool. Uh, I'll I'll be in touch. Thank you. The delivered screws have been made from poor quality steel and had no required attestations. Such screws should never be used in aircrafts, where all parts must endure exceptionally difficult operating conditions. Regards. Mm -hmm. Check when the aileron was serviced. So yeah, we've got, we had it replaced. Yeah, it was replaced by Flycraft in 2019. Yeah, okay. Fly, Flycraft in 2019 might have, might have mucked this up. Lawyer. I can confirm that on this feral day, Miss Goldberg arrived at my office and we took care of her divorce papers. The proof? If there's a need, I can provide the monitoring footage from the office's reception hall. It's not, it's, it's not. But her having an alibi the day of the crash does not mean that she wasn't guilty of tampering with the screws a different day. You know, I'm, it, she could have changed them any time before the fact. Even years ago at this point. Young Tom, look at that clown. Goldberg's plane, I remember it well. This Goldberg guy kept on screaming that he wanted it all to go faster. An exceptionally unpleasant character. If I wasn't at work, I'd punch his face in. The aileron, yeah, I replaced it. The problem screws, I've got no idea. I ordered the screws at All Stuff Inc. Yeah, I can send the order. Oh my gosh. Determining the ultimate culpability here is not my issue. This needs, this, you know, okay, you guys use the wrong screws, you know. They are a collector's item. The screws are a collector's item. What? Oh, I knew it would come back to bite us. Those screws. Goldberg kept screaming he was in a hurry and he had to have that plane ready right at that moment. Unfortunately, there were no aliens on screws anywhere missing stocks i was sick and tired of that guy and the fact that he kept screaming at me i wanted him off my back so i ordered replacements for the screws on the internet they said they were no different from the originals i was young and stupid i definitely wouldn't do that now believe me ah uh, young tom 
you can't let the pilot, you know, the, the pilots get in a hurry and that's when, that's when errors happen, man. There you go. Explanation of the cause of the crash. Helen saw a plane flying in a slanted manner which had lost controllability. The cause had been the aileron which got detached from the wing. This was caused by a fracture in the bolts fastening the aileron. The bolts did not have the right attestation. They shouldn't have been used in an aircraft. Young Tom, the mechanic, had used uncertified bolts in order to fulfill Goldberg's unrealistic expectations as quickly as possible. This rush turned out to have fatal consequences. Young Tom has been accused of dereliction of duty and negligent homicide and might be facing up to eight years in prison. The interesting thing is that Mrs. Goldberg has paid for Tom's attorneys from her own resources. She claims that her husband was a raging nutcase who would force others to obey him, so it wasn't the boy's fault that he wanted to fulfill Goldberg's absurd demands as quickly as possible. Mrs. Goldberg inherited all the family fortune after her husband's death. She decided to permanently move to the mountains and settle down with a new partner. The assistant was immediately fired by Mrs. Goldberg. Due to baseless accusations, the boy did not receive positive letters of recommendation and has been having trouble finding work for a while now. <laughs> To be fair, I'm not sure his job hunt problems are because of the lack of letters of recommendation. It probably has more to do with his murderer's facade. All right, I'm looking forward to investigating some more complex crashes in the future. If you do give this a try, use caution. It seems that the escape key will soft lock some of these screens. Check out some more of the airplane shenanigans playlist when you're bored sometime. Thanks for watching.